All right, so we got this uh, Ford E450 Super Duty diesel. It's got a 6.0 engine in it, and uh, it's eight cylinder. We have a crank, but it's a weird crank, and we have a weird no start situation. So no weird crank, no start. Right? So I thought I'd bring you along and see what uh, shenanigans we can get into. All right, so. There were, I did I did work on it beforehand. There's some stuff that needed to be fixed, like the battery terminals were shot. I'll show you a photo of that. I hope. But I want you to listen to this. So for, you'll notice that we have a battery light on, right? So and this might be an easy video. It might be a complicated one. Alright, so. You hear that just cranks and stops? All right, one more time. All right, so it sounds like the, uh, something's trying to happen, but it ain't happening, if you know what I'm saying. All right, so I don't know what that is. Let's find out. All righty, so that's the setup. I'm trying to get you a better shot things I do for you. Alright, so let's uh, get that there. We're going to touch the top post. Oh, can't even see past my hand, can you? I don't know what you're going to see. But that's what I'm doing. Alright, there. So I touch that. So it's 12.3 volts. So you need to have 12.6 or greater. Because 12.3 means the battery is about 75% charged, which is not that good. So the first thing we should do is double check the voltage. So I'm going to actually set you up right here again so you can hear the starter try to crank. So you try to turn it over two times and you can tell it wants to turn, but not much is happening there. So, yep, you can try to bypass it, see if that gives us enough amps to turn it over. I'm a big fan of safety and uh, if you're going to do this, I recommend you minimize being underneath the vehicle as much as possible. So I just have it set up and I'm going to come around from the other side, when I'm outside the vehicle. If you're going to do this and you're underneath it, make sure you have blocks underneath tires, front and back. Make sure the car is in park and uh, make sure the brake is up, okay? I want this thing to roll away on you and crush you. Okay, so we'll see if it starts. I'm going to put the key in the on position. Okay, right before it cranks. Alright, there we go. Oh, that's kind of scary. Alright, maybe not. All right, let's see if this is gonna work. Oh. All right, so I'm just trying to touch these, not kill myself. Yeah, oh, I want you to see what I'm doing. But I don't want to take one for the team. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay, so here we go. See so here the starter just spins, right? It doesn't shoot out, which makes you believe one of two things. It just doesn't have enough power to complete the process. Because it seems to be able to do it with uh, 
the key, right? So, it means current is not, at these, this gauge wire is just not enough current to uh, engage the starter all the way. So, I think it's the battery. Yeah. So I'm hanging out with my uh, Vin Auto Spa, is that correct? Spa, Spa, yeah. They're over there doing a good job. Give my brother a shout out. Yeah, Vin Auto Spa. They're cleaning the hell out of this car. Look at that thing. Cool. So my name is Najee. I'm the owner of Win Auto Spa. I'm a mobile detailing service. Um, located in the Delaware County area, but I can travel out to New Jersey, Delaware, or Maryland if, if, if have you be in any area. So if you can give me a call at 610-957-83335, 8335, and my, again, my name is Najee, and the business went on the spot. Thank you. All right, I just want to give a shot of this guy. He's been out busting it out. Look at this guy. Like, he's got the whole kit. So whatever your car needs, he's going to take care of that dirty mess. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Keeping it clean for 2021. That's yeah. his contact right there. And send his brother some love and some business, all right? All right, thanks, man. Appreciate it. You Got know. It. Go on. Yeah, you know. Thank it. you. <laughs> At this point, we need to get the starter out so we can do a really good test. And uh, I'm gonna show you with a bunch of stills how to do that. It has three bolts. They're pretty easy to get to. Uh, I use a very small, um, they're, they're called nano sockets. Yeah, they're nano sockets. I highly recommend them. They get into really small spaces. Whenever you have a uh, starter that you are pretty sure it's working but not really like I am, you want to check the flywheel. So this space right now that you see is an open space that is where the starter used to be. And uh, the flywheel is what you see with all the teeth on it. Now. Sometimes these teeth can break off. It's very rare. Usually the starter will lose its teeth before the flywheel, because the flywheel is made out of um, a much harder metal. But it's possible. And if it is missing teeth, then what happens when it misses teeth where the, f where the starter shoots out to turn it, what will happen is it will just, the starter will just spin. So you need to make sure that the location on the flywheel has all the teeth and nothing is missing because uh, you know it, it'll it'll act as if you have a failed starter, but you don't. It'll just be like a flywheel that's um, that's messed up. All right. All right. So here's the proof. Watch right there. Doesn't shoot out. It's way too weak. All right, this is how you set it up. Get your uh, jumper cables. Then you put your uh, positive onto that wonderful part of the starter solenoid, top part where the power would come in from the car battery. And then you have your, this here jumps so this kind of simulates what happens when you uh, turn the key, which is right here. Just going to be your, your on your when your your ignition sends a signal to here, closes off the solenoid here, and then you have the uh, uh, starter solenoid sends a signal to the actual starter motor itself. So I'm just bridging the gap between these two right here and bypassing that and just getting powered over there. And then you got to ground out to the body of the starter which is what this is. So this is gonna be as if it's touching the chassis, and you just touch it like that. You can see the starter, it turns, but it doesn't shoot all the way out. So we got ourselves a failed starter, so that's how you test it off of the vehicle. All right, so we got the same setup, right? Here's a new starter. Let's see if uh, the moment of truth. Sounds 
better. What do you think? I think, I think it might work. All right. All right, let's listen. Let's see what we get. Oh, we did it, buddy. We did it. It's done. It works. Wow. All right, hey, listen. If you like that video, go ahead. Go ahead and give me a little thumbs up. Let me know what you think. Subscribe. Very important, subscribe. Really, 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 really important, subscribe. I'm really gonna bump up my uh, diagnostics uh, videos so you can learn how to fix it yourself. And just like Eric would say, if I can do it, you can do it. Just go ahead and subscribe and leave your comments below. <laughs> All right, later, America. So we got the client two new batteries. And check them out. Let's see what we got here. 12 point. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, you can see. All right, 12 point, 12 point seven volts here. See that? 12 point eight. Okay. And then the other one here. That's 12.7, so not bad. By the way, this is green because I have the poles opposite if I go like this. It'll turn red, that's pretty cool. See, oh, you can't see, so I'm gonna try that. So that's red. Again. Man, batteries are heavy. See? 12, 12.7. So we got, a, we got two good batteries. Let's replace them and we're done. I'm not really a big fan of um, doing any mobile auto work. Occasionally I do it, but I don't like to do it, so I avoid it as much as I can. And um, there's something to be said about when you work with uh, certain clients that do not understand how automobiles work. Right? So this is a problem that does happen more frequently than than not. You have an initial problem that the client tells you. And in this case, it was the battery terminals that were all destroyed. Uh, I don't know what happened. All, all I know is that they were destroyed. And I do know, actually, the uh, hole down that's there for the battery was missing. So the batteries were just slopping around loose on the cable. And then instead of fixing it and getting the proper, like, you know, bracket to hold it in place, whoever worked on it before just said forget it and didn't do that. Now what that did was uh, created a, a long, a bigger problem where the actual uh, terminals, the connectors were getting destroyed slowly as they kept on trying to tighten them to, to get this to like, uh, to, to make a good connection, All right? Okay, so that's what the, that's what the client was experiencing at first. Uh, I, I believe they got this um, E45 E450 uh, used, so there's also a history before them, you know. So the so they started cranking it, you know, to uh, turn it over to see, keep on turning it over, cranking and cranking it to see why it wasn't starting because they were having some failure with the engine also, and also could have been uh, in tandem with the batteries being loose on and off. 
So when they realized the uh, E forty if E four fifty was not turning over, right? And then the 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 starter just completely failed because they just cranked the heck out of it, right? Burnt out the starter windings, so it had no torque to turn the engine over. And this is a diesel engine, and diesel engines need a lot of torque because they don't have spark. They compress air by like 20 to 1, or sometimes up to like 45 to 1 ratio, and that creates a lot of heat. And that's where the combustion comes from. So there needs to be a lot, a lot of compression on the uh, from coming from the starter to help with that process. If you have a weak starter, it's not going to do it. So this starter got burnt out, right? So there's problems on two ends, right? The starter's probably burnt out, but they don't know. They just know that it's just not turning it over anymore. They have a failing engine, or something's wrong with the engine. I don't know what it is, cause it, and, I, and I didn't have time to diagnose it. So I don't know what the problem was I, at the very end. I just know that that was two things happening. And I didn't know that the, there were some engine issues, you know? So as you saw, I got this started. It sat for uh, uh, three days, same place I parked it, and it was running when I left. Came back, and they called me again, said that it's not snarter, and then I'm like, well, this is strange. You know, the uh, battery terminal had come loose, they said. I checked it. Okay, I didn't like it. I got a new battery terminal. I reconnected it. It was really tight. I tried to start the uh, vehicle. Nothing. It wouldn't work. Why, I do not know. All I know is that that's what happened. So just got to be careful when you deal with like clients that don't really know much about automobiles. Uh, they usually don't tell the right story, and sometimes they don't understand there's multiple problems happening at the same time. And that's really gets you in a really dicey situation because you'll fix one thing and thinking that it was completed, and then something else is wrong. So in this situation, I ended up being really lucky getting it to start at least one time. But either way, it's not good for your uh, client's confidence in you. So either way, nobody really wins in this situation.